In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we continue our study of how to build your own particles. In this particular tutorial, we're going to focus on modifying some of the properties that belong to particles. Let me give you an example of two 10 second clips where we have adjusted the properties beyond all the tools we've looked at so far. In this first one, we've reduced the count of the particle to a very small number and we've used the blink method and so we've achieved this rather interesting effect. In this second 10 second tutorial we've used the line emit method and we've adjusted again the life and other features of the properties of the particle to achieve the result you see here. Let's look a little bit more at properties with particles. You can make lots of great changes using this tool. We'll click on our particles room which is the spray of dots or the F6 key and then click on the folded paper with a, a plus in the lower right corner to get into our particle designer. I'm again going to pick the particle that we've used before that I added to the room. This is not in the default selection and click on open. And we notice again the default is the point method and the default direction is down. We're going to change that so we can see this best on the screen. So what I'd like to do is look at some of the parameters and describe what they do and how they change your particles. There are so many here that we're going to split this into two lessons. In fact, in some of the other emit methods, you have other sliders available on the left. But our survey is going to begin with the first few from the top moving down. First one is the emit rate. This is a speed at which the particles are emitted from the source point. When I click on play here, the default is 100. And you see how fast the particles emerge using the bubble emit method and the particle style. That's 100. Watch what happens when we go up to 3000. The larger the number, the slower they emit from your source point. I like to drag over the numbers and type them in. I find that's a lot more precise than using a slider. Let's try 50. Let me find out how fast they are here. So let's, let's settle at something like 200. And here we have a modest emit method emit rate. The next number in the slider is maximum count. This tells you how many particles that you can put on the screen during the course of the particle and the time given. Default is 100. Let me back it down to 10 and you'll see what happens in this case. So once I have 10 particles, no more come from the source point. You can go from 1 all the way up to 500. And here we would have 500, or if our time runs out, it will be short of 500. If we wanted them all on the screen, we would have to increase the emit method or increase the speed. So that's the maximum count. The life of the particle, that determines how long the particle lives Particles have a death uh, factor to them, and what you want to do is determine how long you want them to, in general, maximum time you want them to be on the screen. Now, if I play these right now, I notice that they are all on the screen. If I reduce the life of the particle from 3750, You notice the, the maximum life is about a third of the way across the screen. Let's try 1200 for life. And now it's about two thirds across the screen, almost three fourths for the longest ones. And so the shorter the number, the faster it is before the particles in a sense die. 
So that's the life value. The other one is life variation. This determines what is the variance between one particle and another. If you drag it down to zero, every particle will have the same lifespan. The higher you move this up, the more variation you have in when particles die. Some will fade out early, some will fade out later. That's what the life variation factor does. The next factor we're going to look at in this lesson is size, and then we'll do size variation as well. Size determines the size of the particle when it is first emitted. Now, right now, that this is set to 5. Larger the number, the bigger the particle. If I click here, now I'm having much larger particles come out and do all the other things that we have. The size variation tells me what the variant will be in terms of particle size. Let's go up to uh, 2000 and watch what happens. That's really not workable in this situation. Let's go down to 270. We have the much smaller, but that's the largest size that we will have in terms of variation. And if you want them, again, the same, you drag the variation all the way down to zero, and they all will be uniform in terms of size. Speed will set the speed of the particle. Now, the default is around 20. Let's double that to 40. And let's see what the difference is here. Again, I can modify it. Let's, let's do 60. Let's do 6. You notice the emit is different from the speed. The emit is how fast they come out of the source point. The speed is how fast they travel in whatever direction you've set them on. The last one we'll look at in this tutorial is speed variation. Speed variation is set, starts at, uh, let me turn the speed back to 20, uh, starts at 100. which means some move twice as fast in the, as another. Let's triple that to 300. And now you have quite a variation in terms of the speed. Let's knock it halfway down from the default to 50. And now there, there's a little variation, but it's a lot more uniform in terms of speed. You turn it down to zero. Each of them move at the identical speed, and the control here is how fast they come out of the point of origin. So these are some of the variations that you can do into the properties of the particles. We're going to look at more in the next lesson because we need to de deal with wave, wave amplitude, symmetry, rotation, and gravity.